Ladies and gentlemen, last time me and Mr. Nups regaled you with our to- story of the Berserkers, uh, which was spelt with a Z, which upset some of you. Uh, but one thing we found out during that discussion, and I didn't know this, and I don't think Mike knew this either, is that we both, per- for a period of time, ended up in the most corrupt guild I've ever encountered in World of Warcraft. Uh, we were both actually shocked that we were both there for a period of time. And it's definitely been a feeling in the community, depending on when you found us on YouTube, is that we were always in high-end guilds. And uh, I remember specifically during the Master Looter discussion that, oh, Mike's lives in a bubble. He's never experienced the kind of corruption and horror stories that happen in some of these guilds, which is absolutely not true. Uh, and we kind of wanted to talk about it today because it was an interesting time for the pair of us to move from... The Berserkers was a nice guild. It was, you know, it wasn't good skill-wise, but it was a nice guild. Relatively fair. A couple of bad apples, but... They were good people. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And we can't really say that with this guild in particular. Uh, there were some good people, <laughs> but especially the leadership was um, lacking in humanity, I'd say. They, I, I mean, we're going to get into some stories here. That's obviously what we're doing here today. Uh, we were both there at separate times. We were never in the guild together, which is why I didn't know you even joined. You were there for five months during their... Uh, the guild is confused on Balnazar, which may ring a bell with <laughs> some people, I'm sure. They had uh, quite the legacy, actually, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, but you were, you left the Berserkers very early. And as we talked about in the Berserkers video, I stuck it out with the Berserkers till the bitter end, kind of. But you saw the light mm-hmm. that it was going badly. And you went to the Berser- you went to Confuse for five months, was it, according to your raid history there? Yeah, so to set the scene, um, we were both in Berserkers, we were trying to do Blackwing Lair, we killed Razorgore, which was a major accomplishment, but then people just didn't want to go to Vale. And once I noticed that Vale was going to be such a struggle for people to show up and actually progress, that's when I, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> um which I, I just I just took the next step, right? I, I had all the gear for a top player within a guild like Berserker. So I had all the Moncore stuff. I had some Blackwing Lair stuff, like the stuff that you get from Razor Gore or like that kind of that, that power level of items. So you, at that point, you can take the step up. So you go to the, the next step in the ladder, basically, which was the mid-tier guild that is confused on Balnazar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, had, they uh, were doing the fairy, and I think they maybe progressing the fairy and they were just done the fairy and i think that was kind of the level they were at at that moment well, um, I, this is the interesting thing for me actually to set the scene when i joined they had just lost a lot of players which i now suspect was including you uh because they yes. were up to <laughs> getting i think they were starting nax and they had, uh, are working on cthune something like that and that's why i joined um i got scouted actually which was really interesting uh, because it's the first and only time it's really happened. I mean, I get, like, when I left Bald Fat and Ugly, this whispers like, you can come join here and stuff like that, but that's more to do with YouTube relevance than anything else. But this time around, it was the first time I was scouted as a player, and it was during an AQ20 run where they lacked healers, and my name had been passed around a little bit, because remember, we didn't have cross-server things, so people knew healers from other guilds. And I got a whisper from this person, and was like, hey can you come to aq20 and i i did what everybody always does right you shift click the name who is it what guild are they from uh and so confusing there which i knew to be a relatively good guild much better than the guild i was in the berserkers at the time so i was like yeah yeah yeah, i'll come along and smashed it actually crushed it and off the back of that they were like you know do you want to join we're looking for players right now uh we're up to cthune which is the message I was given, which is the total lie that you guys see every day in trade chat is our ex-mythic guild. We're going to smash everything. We've got a great history. Joined the guild and they were re-clearing uh, Blackwing Lair. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I've been playing already. <laughs> like, I'm right exactly where the Berserkers had me. This is a, this is a joke. Uh, and it turned out that they'd actually just lost a huge portion of their better players. And this was during Nax Ramus. So I'm guessing I joined as you left, re- reasonably speaking, because uh, you would have probably been part of that exodus that joined the best guild on the server, which was the Harlequins at the time. Uh, do you remember how many people yep. left with you to go there? Um, I'm not sure if it was like a coordinated wave or it was, it was just like uh, like one every couple of days uh, that was just making a move. It was just that period of time where um, we had AK40, um, 
the people that had gear to move on moved on because they knew that Confuse just wasn't going to do as well as Harlequins was. Um, and even Harlequins wasn't actually like top top tier because Harlequins never actually cleared Naxxramas. Uh, I think the furthest they got were uh, four horsemen and that's when TBC launched I think that's so it wasn't even like top top tier it was just the best that was available on the server uh, so that's where people that had the gear to to go to go to that guild just gravitated to once Nekram was released. Yeah. So that's kind of like the time frame that we're looking at, I think. Yeah, for sure. And it was, it's it's hard to explain the level of corruption here that I experienced because I actually, I from what I can gather from our conversations, I experienced it much worse than you did. Uh, is we kind of had a precursor conversation before we started this to try and get our, our you know get our ducks in a row, and it wasn't any major events that happened to you, but you could tell something wasn't right with this guild in particular the leadership but when i joined it was blatant so i kind of suspect the exodus of all those players and pushing back the progress of that guild the guys who got left behind were the ones that were the the poison <laughs> so and they were then emboldened by the fact that they were bringing in all these new players uh they just wanted to get stuff done that it's, uh, I think I, I got it very in my face as to what the problems in this guild were. But you you just sensed something was wrong. I mean, you were there for five months and these are the same players. Yeah, I mean, I was happy to be in a guild that could actually clear Blackwing Lair. Like that's, that's kind, of, kind of like that week or two or three of euphoria of, oh, thank God, I'm actually doing the content that I want to do and I can work towards getting the gear that I want to have. <laughs> um, and then things kind of start setting in like, hey, this is kind of odd. Like we have a, we have a rogue guild master. Um, he has a thunder fury for some reason. <laughs> Mortimus, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Liverpool um, Mortimus. And Yes, and he's getting brought to Onyxia, even though he doesn't need anything. Uh, why is that? Why is he? Why is he joining on an alt all of a sudden? Why is is that a second rogue that he has? Wait, that second rogue actually has the best sword from Blackwing Lair. Why? Yeah, <laughs> like all all those kind of things just start like tumbling around in your head and think, oh, okay, that's what it is. And even though I don't have any like major things that happened to me because I kind of just like stuck it out because I, I wanted the gear I wanted to move up so I just stuck around for a couple of months I did my job as best as I could I stayed silent I didn't complain I showed up to raid I got gear when I was lucky and when I had enough gear to move on to the next step that's when I moved on and said goodbye to this situation well my introduction um, to Mortimus was a little different than that uh is uh, i think you have a specific example don't you i do yeah it was a strange day so i joined the guild i was in and the first thing i get asked to do minutes after i joined the guild actually was to go and do ubrs uh, they were doing it 10 man at the time i'd never done ubrs 10 man it had always been 15s to get gear and they were struggling which instantly red flag, right? This is the guild that I've joined. They're farming AQ or supposedly doing Cthune. And they're struggling in UBRS 10. So I went, mm, okay. But also, <clears throat> ego-wise, I was like, if I come in here and we smash it, uh, and I don't let anybody die, because I was a healer at the time, as a priest, then that says something about me on day one. And I thought that's going to be a really cool little thing if I do that. So I, I was like, yeah, 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 of course. You know, I'm eager to impress, new trial, first day in the guild, that kind of thing. Uh, and I get there, and they're actually on General Dracoseth. And I'm like, oh, okay, weird. Uh, why are we here? And they were doing the Blackwing Lair achievement for somebody. I was like, oh, okay, this kind of makes sense now why these dudes are here. Is somebody's all or whatever needs Blackwing Lair achievement? Okay, I can I can dig this. They're just doing a quick run, and for whatever reason, they got stuck on General Dracoseth. And so they were trying to figure out what to do. <clears throat> and um, one of my tricks that I was doing regularly in Berserkers was to be the kiter for the ads because yeah, Mind Blast at the time, which was the priest DPS spell and still is, carried with it a huge amount of threat. So what I could do is like Mind Blast the far one and then hit the other one and say, don't hit anything for a second and don't heal. I'll get aggro until I can Mind Blast the second one and then I can kite them both uh, because it wasn't hard to do. I want to be clear, trick was just me hitting them and running away. Uh, that was it. 
And then at the end, I could press fade and they would go back to the raid once they killed Drakazath. Because it was usual practice not to kill the Ats. You just wanted to blast Drakazath down. Uh, so I did that and it went well. But they wiped on just Drakazath, which really confused me at the time. Ha ha ha, the name confused. I was so baffled. I was like, you didn't even have the ads there. All you had to do was kill Drakasath. And I was typing while I was kiting. So I had like Numlock on. And I was like, are you ready for the ads yet? Because Berserkers would have killed this guy by now. I was like, really, really? But it's 10 man. So maybe it's like much harder, something like that. Anyway, they wiped. And so we wiped. And then they were like, we need to, uh, Mort wants to come. And that's what started appearing to the raid chat is Mort wants to come. And I was like, I don't know who the Mort, who Mort is. And then I checked and it was the guild master. I'm like, oh shit, the guild master's coming. This is kind of a big deal now. I kind of needed to perform. And this was the first time, contrary to popular belief, I did not see it all the time in Ogrimmar, uh, this rogue appeared in full blood fang uh, with a thunder fury. And I think it was Nightmare Engulfing Blade or something. One of the ones from the Dragons of Nightmare. Like a really super rare, very cool drop. Uh, it might have been Maladeth. It was something that looked fucking awesome. Anyway, it was the best looking character I'd ever seen in World of Warcraft. And it blew my dick off. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is a character right here. Um, and, I, and it came running in. And I love undead animations as well. So it was like extra cool to me to see this rogue walk in with all these swords and shit. And I was like, whoa, dude, this guy's a fucking monster. And I was so impressed. Um, then the came up voice comms, it was from Liverpool. Not many people know the Liverpool accent, but it's very strong and it's very noticeable. I was like, oh shit, it's a guy from Liverpool. Uh, and then his wife came, who was also in the guild. And I was like, oh right, and she came on her hunter. And like, they swapped out some trials who weren't performing well or whatever, because they were still recruiting for the whole guild. And they melt Drakasath in about 10 seconds, right? These guys wreck Drakasath down to the floor. And I barely had to kite, and he came back. And then I think he said something like, oh, did you, uh, the priest kiting? That's fucking stupid. That was the first thing I I, I got told, I think. So I'm like, that's fucking stupid. And, and I, I keyed up because I've never been shy. And I was like, no, no, don't worry. I've got it. I've got it. And I was like, it's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. This is so stupid. Like, what? never do this. And I was like, that's no, fine. Don't worry about it. And I did it. And he came back and he went, still fucking stupid. Like, you guys are shit. And it was very negative. Like, this guy, well, shit. I was like, imagine you can't kill Drakasath or something like that. I was like, okay. <clears throat> Fair enough. And it kind of twisted around to maybe I was part of the problem. Because I was in this group that needed help. <laughs> so he looked at everybody who was in the group like they were shit. And he had to come in and rescue us, right? That was kind of the impression he walked away from. Because he walked in and shredded the place up. Uh, and obviously everybody in that group was a shitter. So that did not work out well for me at all. Uh, sadly. From then though, Mike, it was so weird is I joined with two other players. One of them was a warrior, an extremely good warrior, an Irish guy came, named Tyrant, and a warlock called X-Men, which I believe you remember X-Men very well from the Berserkers days, mm -hmm. but he was a good friend. I'd played MMOs with him for years before that. And Tyrant, uh, as a warrior, was brought in as a DPS warrior in vanilla, which, you know, it has its problems. But he said he wouldn't mind tanking for a big guild. He kind of looked forward to tanking. He was, he was kind of into it. So he started getting a bit of tank gear, which was scraps, really, because they, they had some other warriors as well. It was being passed around. Uh, but he was still one of their top DPSs. Then one of the officers, a shaman, and this is where you raised your eyebrows as well. It was a resto shaman who had Sulfurus over everybody else. Now, Sulfurus isn't a great weapon, I remember anyway, it. as most people tell you. <laughs> yes, it's not a great weapon anyway, but he used to heal with Sulfurus on. Um... Which caught my, raised my eyes as a healer. It's like, why are you doing that? But he was so overgeared. Actually, it wasn't that much of a problem. And it shouldn't have raised my eyes. But I was very, like, min maxi as much as possible back then. So healing, knowing he had much better healing weapon and shield, I was like, that's fucking stupid. Uh, why have you got Sulfurus anyway? Like, that was the question. I was like, why have you got it? Uh, but I wasn't privy to that. He got it for some reason. He says, oh, uh, I want a tank now. And uh, this next day, he's got this gr like green geared level sixty warrior in molten core uh, with us, and he started taking loot off Tyrant, uh, like all of it, like every single scrap of warrior gear just went straight to him. Now I'm clear on gearing people up and all this kind of stuff, but there was definitely something strange going on when the might shoulders dropped, and I forget the name of that boss, the guy who had the four ads with him. Uh, Tyrant said. I, like, because he was, wasn't shy either. He just goes, I, I've missed, you know, you've skipped me over like five items. It was one of those lucky raids where all the might shit drops off the trash and all that kind of stuff. He's like, I really do need the shoulders. My shoulders are poo. 
Um, you know, and <laughs> I've missed out on so many items. They went to an officer meeting, Mike, in the middle of Molten Core. It was really weird. And we all sat there for like, 10 minutes. stop the raid. Let's, let's the talk raid. about this. <clears throat> yeah, they stopped the raid. Um, and they went on to have a private officer meeting. And we all knew what was about to happen. Right? It was about the most pointless officer meeting in the world. Uh, they just wanted to figure out how to start screwing people over politely, I think is what they were trying to do. Um, and so they came back on comms and went, we're going to give these to, I think his character was called Potens at the time. Uh, because he's probably going to be tanking more than you. He wasn't the main tank, by the way. He was just a warrior. Um, okay. Tyrant was a bit pissed. You've asked me to tank, you know, but I'm... Oh, sure. If it means I could DPS, whatever, right? It means I'm going to be DPSing more. That's fine. Next week, Fokker took all the DPS gear as well, right? <laughs> in case he needed to DPS in the fights that don't need another tank, he then took all the DPS gear as well. So you can imagine now, my friend Tyrant is in my ear going, what the fuck is going on? And as for me, I was under the radar. And this is no joke. The priest classmaster, who was a really strange guy called Sabu Maru, did not know I existed for three months, which I found really, really strange. I had never experienced that in my life. Uh, but we'd been raiding. I'd been raiding there for three months. I had done Zulgarub with them. I had done AQ20 with them. I was regularly part of the raid team because I loved it. I was in every main raid. Um, and then we did Chromagus. And uh, I had Decursive, which also dispelled people, right? And I was told, like, in massive caps, I got this whisper saying, do not heal, just dispel. If you see healing on there, you're in trouble. I was like, what? Are you crazy? So, but me being me, I was like, fine, malicious compliance all the way, is I just sat in the corner and just spammed my Decursive key, which was like E or something, and just spammed it. I was top of the Decurse, <laughs> uh, Dispels. So then he mm -hmm. whispered me, he's like, how long have you been in the guild? And I was like, three months or something. It's like, really good dispelling. I had literally just used an add-on, right? I had stood AFK, pressing it. I could have bowed it to a mouse wheel and watched TV. He was like, that was some sick dispelling. Like, it's good to have you here. That's the first time he inspected me as well. He goes, you don't have any tier two, which I didn't. I've been there three months and I've been passed over for every piece of tier two. But I was the newest priest. So, okay, I guess. I mean, I was... who was it going to? I guess like, some, some kind of alt, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to alts in a second because that's where it yeah. gets really... Yeah, I was pissed at this point. I was already pissed. But this really cemented my problems is where they're like, they don't even know I exist. Literally, I've been here every week. I they mean, don't know I exist. Were Clash channels not a thing at that point anymore? Um, the way it worked in the guild, which was another big red flag, because we came from Berserkers where we had Clash channels. We had the Priest channel and stuff like that is they had two priests that they considered to be the core. One was Sabu Maru. Uh, the other was a guy, and I, th I hope I don't get his name wrong, because this guy was a gem. And he was called Norganim. And Norganim never spoke, never keyed up, but was a fantastic healer. He might as well have been a robot. Like, an absolutely fantastic healer. And I ended up whispering him directly, and he turned out to be very talkative and really kind, super nice, but felt very loyal to the guild, even though he very much disagreed with what was going on in the guild. But he felt very loyal, and he was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And so we, what we ended up with, and you're right, Mike, is we had these people who were full tier 2 and AQ geared, and then me, who was wearing, like, ZG shit. And that was the disparity between the raid group, and it just kept going top-sided. So after that, he whispers me, and he goes, uh, you don't have any tier 2. It's like, no, I haven't got anything. You've never given me anything. It went to blah, blah, blah's alts and blah, et cetera. He goes, oh, we'll get you two piece as soon as possible then. Because that was mana regen or something like that. It was a big deal for priests at the time. You got some MP5 or some shit. And uh, <laughs> never got it. My priest still doesn't have any tier two. He forgot immediately after that. Like, he didn't give a shit. Like, at all. <laughs> um, but the alt thing, I do have a story. Because, uh, like I said, Confused has a legacy about this. <clears throat> Mortimus is kind of famous for the person who ganked the guy opening AQ. Uh, a priest mm -hmm. called Raffaron on the Alliance side. Uh, the, during the AQ we, opening did we event. cover that in the last video? I don't think so. We, this, that's um, when we just both discovered we were in Confused and we kind of went on a sidetrack about Confused. Um, yeah. But yeah, as the AQ event was going on and the, everybody was cheering and celebrating, he was the one who killed the... Because Raffaron was a priest who was opening the AQ gates. Uh, ganked him right in front of it and then... <laughs> The whole thing turned into a fucking mess. That was the kind of guy he was. Um, but the alt thing. So every week um, they did Molten Core for alts. That's what it was designated at. Now here's the rules, Mike. You ready? Here was the rules as, I, as it was explained to me. 
if you were a trial, of which at this point, because of your exodus and other people probably leaving, it was about 50% of the guild, you have to go on your main to support the members. Because they want to do fast clears. Okay, I kind of get that. I don't need anything from Molten Core. But I kind of get it that you want to do this alt run. You'll get promoted to member. Then you get these advantages as well. While the trials sort of like carry you a little bit on your alt characters, etc, etc. So I kind of dug it. My alt at the time was a rogue. Uh, it's still the same rogue I have today, meticulous. And um, <laughs> I wanted to play my rogue in Molten Core because I couldn't get anything from Molten Core. But yeah, it was part of the main raid situation to be there. So week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, I'm healing Molten Core. And uh, I'm getting very, very pissed off that I'm just not getting anything. And I don't seemingly get promoted to member either. Because they don't know I exist, right? <laughs> That's the simple thing. They don't know I exist. But the guild's full now, Mike. So there's no new trials coming in. The guild's actually got like a roster of 50 people. Of which half of which are trials. And we're doing AQ again. And if our first AQ raid went very well. We were up to the Twin Emperors on the first day back. So it went very, very well. Oh, that's pretty good. It was a really good first raid back. Like they told us uh, this was a big deal. We're now ready to go back to AQ. It's going to be fine. Uh, we'll see how we get on and the first raid we were up to the twin emperors it was really good um so at this point i'm like getting pretty pissed off so i whisper my class leader sabu mario is like can i come on my rogue from Mortal Core? i've been healing this for like three months now i can't get anything from here and my rogue would be so much more fun for me to be here like can i go can i come on my rogue sure no problem I'm kind of surprised, Mike. I'm going to get to cover my rogue. So there I am. I log on my rogue. Uh -huh. I get the raid invite. I'm like we're all, all excited. I'm going to get to play my rogue. I've actually put some work into it. I'm, uh, I'm looking for an asterisk. I think oh, it's it gets worse than that, man. It gets <laughs> way worse. So I go in my rogue. I'm doing really well. My name is in the top 10 of the damage. Uh, I'm beating other rogues. Uh, it's, it's going super, super well. Like I'm kicking ass. Getting not any loot. But the, the main thing I wanted was a core hound tooth. I don't know why. I didn't have any Night Slayer or anything other than BOEs, which I'd managed to pick up. But something about the Core Hound Tooth, I was like dead set on it. It was going to improve my DPS tenfold if I got the Core Hound Tooth. Something, you know when you get dead set on an item, like uh, like the trinkets that were in Molten Core? Remember them? Like the Ephemeral Power Trinkets and shit like that. Like this is going to skyrocket me into Valhalla. The rest can wait. Uh, so I was like really dead set on the Core Hound Tooth. Which I think either drops from Domo or Raggy. I, I'm not sure, actually. Who drops the core? Um, it's someone late in the in the raid. Gormag, I think. A Golomag. What's what's he called? Like the the. It is Major Domo. Giant oh, it's before Mo Major Domo. Yeah, it's Major Domo. It, so it is. Is it Major Domo? Yeah, okay. it is Major Domo. Yeah, I just googled it there. So I really wanted the core hound tooth. So the fact that I was getting passed over for other alts, fine on Night Slayer and things like that. But as far as I was concerned, that meant I had better chance at core hound tooth because Mike. Every other rogue in the raid had it already. Yeah. If it drops, it's Makes sense. mine. It's mine. Every other rogue in this raid already has the core hound tooth, and the ones that don't are swords, and they have better swords than the core hound tooth. So this is great for me. I'm really excited. I've not gotten an item for the entire raid. If it drops, it's mine. I'm in perfect position for this. Uh Sabu Maru whispers me. Ah, oh, no loot today, eh? You might as well have come on your priest. I was like, oh, well, I'm really after Core Hound Tooth anyway. He goes, oh, yeah, Core Hound Tooth. That's a really good dagger. And I said, yeah, everybody else already has it. This is where I majorly fucked up. Like, everybody else already has it. So if it drops, it'll be coming my way. And like, so that's going to be pretty mm -hmm. sweet. And he goes, huh. Two minutes later, I get another whisper of Sabumaru. We need you to swap to your priest. The next, uh, we're coming up to Major Domo. And Ragnaros. It's like, we need you to swap to your priest. Our DPS isn't good enough. We could do with the extra healing. Uh, the healing team's not quite where we need it to be for Domo and Raggy. It'd be really nice if you swapped to your priest. Like, polite as anything, Mike. Like, so nice. And I should say, Sabumaru was on his priest. And I'm like, this is fucking weird. Like, you could, you could heal this place on your own. I was his solo healing Molten Core many times, essentially. I was like, oh, Whatever. I was like, really? Because I'm going to get the core hound tooth. And he was like, yeah, we really need it. It's fine. I go out. I'm pissed off. I'm angry. I get, I log my priest. I come to the raid. Sabu Maru leaves the raid group. Sabu Stabby joins the raid group. His fucking rogue joins the raid group. 
and I, I knew that's that's where I was going. And I was like, "What the fuck, man!" And I whispered, "Was like, what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh, I remembered my rogue also needs uh, core hounties, but with you healing, we're probably strong enough to carry it." <laughs> and I, I was so filled with rage. I, I, I can remember it to this day about how fucking angry I was. And it dropped, by the way. He got it on his rogue. I never saw him play that rogue again, ever. Uh, <laughs> in a fucking hundred years. And I, I, I think it also killed my love of loot at that time because I was just so pissed off uh, and angry that this was the kind of leadership we were dealing with. And I was like, oh, this is, this is, this is some dark shit that's happening right here. This is some bad times. And we killed it. I just logged off immediately. When I logged back on, it was him asking me to go to ZG where and heal for him on his shaman or something <laughs> i don't know some guild run that was going on it was it was that kind of guild where that happened regularly and more often than not and uh, the ringleader was the guild master which made it even worse uh he had every character at level 60 which was unheard of to me at the time that anybody would ever do that and uh, in zg he would change characters per boss depending on what he wanted and uh, there was a rule <clears throat> unwritten i think that the guildmaster can take whatever he wants as payment for being guildmaster. Like, I feel like that was more normal <laughs> in those times. Because, I mean, in your situation, what would you have even done at that point? You were at trial, you were, you've gone on notice for three months, mm -hmm. you haven't gotten anything. Like, what do you even do in that situation? Because I feel in those times, it, like, like you say, it was normal for there to be a tax. There was a tax that you paid to the officers, to the guildmaster, because they were the big boys for some reason that that's they got more chances at loot they were the first to get it even though they might not have been the best players themselves but it, it was i don't know i'm sure it was like an unwritten rule it was a gentleman's agreement it was just more normal in those times i feel anyway it's Maybe... one of the greatest things i think has been left behind now i no doubt it still exists in many guilds but none of the guilds i played in the last eight years <clears throat> No, since probably the Burning Crusade, actually, I've had any r remote thing like that. It has to still exist, right? It's just not. It's just not in the guilds anymore that we would join or even come close no. to anymore. It has to. It has to still be a thing, I imagine. Sometimes it's out of kindness, right? Like I, I do believe that when it's something like a mount uh, or something like that, I'm trying to think of a situation where it was done out of generosity. Like, my guild, once I joined Kill Count Lost in the Burning Crusade, like, obviously, I could say it earlier than that, because when I started guild leading Dark Light, I didn't do anything like that. Uh, and in fact, it's got shouted at, because on my warrior, I passed the, um, what was the sword of Hakar? The one with the big curve on it? Jinrock? I gave that to a yeah. hunter. I gave that to a hunter against the, the wishes of nearly half the raid team and a lot of the guild, and certainly the officers. Even though I was on my warrior and I wanted it, but in my mindset, I was like, I don't want to do Confused again. Like, fuck that. I, this is my alt warrior. There'll be other chances to get it. My main's a priest. I'm not that bothered about it. Uh, which I was. And then that hunter replaced it like a week later. And he was like, you know, I shouldn't have taken this. I'm sorry. He whispered me apologizing. But I, I think that Confused moment really opened my eyes to not doing that. But there have definitely been mount drops. And I want to say, did Malagos drop a mount? Or somebody like that dropped a mount. Oh, no, Sartharian 10, actually. Uh, I... I can't remember whether it dropped a mount or it gave you a mount. Something that dropped a mount every time you killed it. You know, like Gul'dan. Gul'dan always dropped a mount if you killed it. Um, and we gave that to the Guildmaster, but we he didn't want it. And he was like, It's not that he didn't want it, but he wanted to roll it out. And we were like, no, 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 you take it. But he didn't want to do that. He was like, no, no, no. And we said, no, you take it. It's fine. It's, like, it's, it's all good. Um, it might have been a Marnie Warbear, actually. Because uh, that was, I think that was a drop after each run, something like that. It's like, no, you take it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, you, know, you know, it's it's you do a good job. Let's take it. But the, it's very different than it's mine. And to see someone yeah. swap every boss on ZG, which was crazy to watch, by the way, is like, oh, I, I want the shield off this, even though the tank wants it. I'm gonna log my warrior and DPS and take the shield, and then I'm gonna log my shaman over here. And then I'm going to do my mage over here and just take everything throughout the entire run that was theirs. That 
I haven't seen since that day. And it was definitely the I do not want to be here attitude, <laughs> right? It must have been, like, exacerbated by the times, right? Because at that point, you were tied to guilds to take the next step. Mm -hmm. You couldn't solo gear as you could now. Like, if you wanted to, say, reach a heroic guild of world rank 2000, let's say, right now, solo, you could absolutely do it. You could pug, you could... Uh, solo bgs you could a queue for for um ranked battlegrounds you could get that kind of gear that gets you at like 205 210 and that gets you into a heroic guild that can clear the current raid that's just the not volume, something you that know it's six right like if you really yeah even it. that absolutely uh, that's just something that couldn't be done back then you were tied to your guild and you were tied to what your guild could clear um, so in Berserkers, you effectively had a lower item level cap than you would if you were in a guild like Confused. So, uh, and then you needed a certain eye level to get to a guild like Confused, which, which was mid-tier, and get to a guild like Harlequins, which was top-tier. Um, so you just kind of took all that crap, all, you, you, you ate all the shit because you had to eat all the shit. And I, I, looked, I, like. I thought I wasn't sure as well. Another part of this for me, and I think this is where a lot of our viewers get stuck in these guilds and why drama time even exists. I didn't know any different. For all I knew, Berserkers was the weird one, right? That was the weird way. And this is how it worked as you went higher up the chain. Like that's, that's kind of the mindset I remember having at the time is like, maybe this is how it is the further up you go. Uh, for all I know, the leadership is working six to seven times harder than everybody else in order to progress these super mega raids, because we eventually did get into Nax Ramus and stuff. Um, and maybe that is a thing. Maybe it should be rewarded. It's Even though everything in my brain was telling me, fuck no, these guys are assholes, Like, absolute, complete monsters of players. The other part of me was like, maybe this is normal. Maybe this is how it is. Maybe this is just something you need to deal with going up is you're basically going to be fed the scraps unless you and i think this is where it gets tempting right is unless you get yourself into that officer position which i'd done in berserkers i was certainly good enough to do here because i was even though i wasn't getting noticed i was still out healing them all which was crazy um it was it was bizarre to think to myself at the time and that's why i didn't leave straight away and i think probably why a lot of people don't leave these scenarios straight away is maybe this is the normal way these things are done maybe this is completely standard that the guild master should be worshipped and praised even though you fucking hate him and if you're listening to this i fucking hated you so much dick uh <laughs> I, don't, I really don't care i fucking hated you so much man um <laughs> it was just i don't know how do you know when it's bad? That's the thing. Because I, I, I do see that a lot in our comment sections and on, you know, when we're reading forums and things like that is, oh yeah, corruption is widespread. It's running rampant. It's not. But if you accept it and you stay there, you will feel that way. <laughs> like 100%. It will absolutely feel that way. And I should have left straight away. And why I didn't is because I'm pretty sure, Mike, I thought it was normal. I thought this was just part of the fucking process. I imagine thinking thinking back of those times where server reputation was a, was a thing and it was a big big deal mm -hmm. i think i uh, i can imagine as young teens which we both were at the, i must have been like 15 16 you must have been 19 20 yeah, i imagine like um it must have felt good ish at least to be in a guild like confused you were you were clearing things that not many guilds were doing. You had gear that not many people had. You were in a guild that had some kind of fling to it. If you had the tag confused above your, uh, uh, underneath your name at that time, I won't say you were a big deal, right? But you were, you were a bigger deal than you were in Berserkers, that's for sure. Yeah. I imagine it might have felt good to be in that guild, even though you knew it was an absolute cesspool that you had to take all this this dumb stuff that you didn't have to take in Berserkers, but now you're in a guild that has some kind of fame on the server that is at least mid-tier, that is above average, and you're wearing gear that you were you were looking up to the players that had that gear, and now you have it. And that, that means something, and I, I think that's probably a reason why both us stayed at least for six months or a couple of months uh, more. I think you stayed in that guild than, than I did. 
There must have been a reason. I don't think. I'm tr I'm trying. This might be inaccurate, but not by much. I don't think I got a single item in confused. I don't think uh, I did. Not, not, not even AQ. No. I'm trying to really rack my brains now, but I think that was probably what ultimately was when I'd had enough, is that I'd been there for so long, and they kept bringing in alts of mains that kept taking stuff. I am almost... So <clears throat> I remember having the thought that the first time I stepped foot in Nax Ramus, I was still the same geared the first day I joined the guild. Because I did not... So that I, must have I been Molten Core. <clears throat> Uh, I don't think my priest ever advanced gear-wise after Molten Core. I never got two-piece tier two. I think I had one piece of tier two. I think I either got braces or belt or something of transcendence. Uh, I never oh, got the two-piece bombs. Yeah, like, you that's... finished the expansion with Molten Core gear. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, it was just that was the scenario I found myself in. I ended up. I think the breaking point came during Twin Emperor's progression, which was. I was now considered... This is how stupid this guild was, man. I was now considered good enough to solo heal everybody in the raid who wasn't the tank. So the way we did Twin Emperors, and it might be different now because people have refined those strategies over the years and Classic's been out for a while, is that you had the teams running backwards and forwards, right? The, the melee and the range would swap sides or whatever. Um, and in the middle, there were all those bugs that were passive they were like yellow but occasionally one would enrage and become active and it needed to be dealt with all the other healers would stand on the stairs and heal to the sides of healing the groups and they would do this rotation because they had the five second rules there where like two of them would heal then they'd go like afk while the two others took over and so on and so forth but i was considered now good enough and my name was in the guild uh to solo the entire midsection of the twin emperors for the entire fight and that involved me having Tyrant, who was still around, <clears throat> ki solo kill all the bugs, uh, enraged or not, and we just pulled more because we were bored doing this, and uh, all the healers. So the healers never had to heal themselves because all their healers had to go into the raid. So I would solo heal all the healers on the, on the stairs and Tyrant running around being meleeed. Um, and I... I still don't think I was given anything other than probably... I think it was braces. I think I had tier 2 braces. I think that was it. All the way until next Ramus. That was... That was pretty... I think that was the breaking point because it was like, we're now getting told we're good enough to do this. Tyrant's not getting any gear because he's being passed over for the other guy. Right? And no matter... Because even... It carried, that carried on into AQ. Like that thing that happened in Molten Core where Tyrant got passed over. And I care about Tyrant because he was my close friend from another MMO. Um, it happened again in AQ. They re-geared that same warrior over Tyrant again. So Tyrant was still wearing blue shoulders while doing his Twin Emperors. <laughs> Whereas I think the tank's got them stupid green things. And I remember the, the, the swap... I, I think that one guy who re-rolled got the Might shoulders, then the next week got the Wrath shoulders, and then got the AQ-40 shoulders in the space of about two weeks or something stupid like that. While Tyrant was still in these blues. And we'd had enough by this point. So he started wearing like Alterac Valley shoulders with the big spikes on. He, he just farmed his own, which is what the alternative was. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, like I, I, I distinctly remember going into uh, Nax for the first time and starting the spider wing um, and looking at my character and thinking, I still haven't had anything. And I remember complaining to Sabu Maru that I still don't have two piece tier two. And I think the response I got at the time was, don't worry about that. You'll get tier three now instead. <laughs> and I was like, if I've not had an item out of you guys in like months, <laughs> other than a pair of braces, there is zero chance you're giving me tier three as any form of priority. <laughs> it's never mm -hmm. going to happen in a million. You guys will bring your fucking alts before I get some tier three out of this. And I think that was when I was like, I'm done here. I'm absolutely done. And I started bitching more and more and. Uh, I know we did get a couple of their players for Dark Light though, um, which was nice. Uh, I did I did start making some friends and being like, "Are you okay? you know they're better players, especially the quiet ones who seem to just be along for the ride." I think the problem is as well. I noticed there's a lot in confused, and other people probably relate to this. There are a number of people who are old school in those guilds who still get taken care of, but don't get themselves like involved in the nastiness, but they still reap the benefits. So there's yeah. kind of, they're kind of like 
along for the ride because they're still getting the benefits, but they're not directly being the dickbags. But they will be given loot as a priority because that they're, they're all like Norganim was probably like that. Norganim was a full tier two priest and had everything, even though he never spoke or anything. But he was old school, right? He had that. He had that. He had his years in, so he, he kind of got carried along. Not carried because he held his own, but he was part of the. He was part of the results of the shit without causing the shit. I mean, they were probably, they were likely the best players of the raid, though, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. um, they they weren't cocky enough or arrogant enough to be involved in those politics. They were just happy to play the game and play the game well, I think, on average. Um, so in that sense, they deserve the loot to progress the raid. Yeah, there's, there's some, there's some asterisks there, but um, those, I, those, yeah. those were not the people that made that guild a bad place, that's for sure. They weren't the ones that made it a bad place, but they certainly let it happen with getting the benefits of it being a bad place. Because they always got prioritized. You would have... If you were that player, you would have done the same, though, wouldn't you? I, I would have. Oh, fuck no. No, no, absolutely not. No? No, no way. No, no way. No way. If I thought we were <laughs> fucking over our players, I was like, this is going to kill the guild. This is fucking stupid. Like, yeah, 100%. No way. I mean, I have definitely made some probably questionable loot choices, but usually it's because somebody's on the border of being kicked. Um, and I think that's a struggle that you often have when you're distributing loot and you're using a council system is if realistically, all th if everything was equal and black and white and it was all clear, then it should go to X. But you're 90% sure you're going to get rid of this guy as soon as humanly possible. And there's he's obviously causing problems. Um, he's started missing raids. You know, there's an issue there that it should go to the guy who's here every week, who's doing all his stuff. But well, that's quote unquote unfair, and that guy is here for the kill. Uh, but usually, I mean, historically speaking, for me, that has always ended badly. Shinrock would have been an example. That hunter then left shortly after he got that. Uh, in Kill Count Lost, there was a very big moment where if you did the hard modes of Ulduar, you got kind of a, an Algalon weapon or something special for killing them. And we had a shaman, I think, who came in who hadn't been around for weeks but just happened to show up and shamans were kind of a big deal for bloodlust because it was it was you know it was important to have shamans and shamans in groups was just a good idea right so they brought him along and he was there for the kill and the i think it was an algalon thing dropped and he was like i want that and technically yeah he was due it right <laughs> technically and i know uh our, our raid leader was like oh, fuck's sake <sighs> where the other two three shamans who had been you know carrying that team for that long were like what do we do here and i think they did give it to him and he just never logged back in it was just one of those like you do end up getting bitten more often than not in those scenarios but it is technically fair it's a tough choice that i don't i don't think people i think people fall very hard one way or the other on that uh, i fall the other way though i'm not fucking players over especially new trials like i don't know it's just uh, we, we saw recently in the drama time that the guild was disenchanting items rather than give it to trials so they have oh, to prove no. their worth. Yeah, Come these on. power trips are crazy, right? That's 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 nuts. It, it's so bizarre to me. It really is. So bizarre is that you would go to those why, lengths. What, what? Why do you think it was different for me though? Because I did get gear in that guild, even though it, I wasn't priority or anything. It trickled down to me, but. I didn't make a name in that guild. People didn't really know me, I think. I just showed up and did my thing and I logged off again. And I'm pretty sure that was the case anyway. I don't remember any friends in that guild. I hardly remember names as well. But I did... Actually, a funny story. I never got the items that I wanted, Mike. <laughs> I was... As, as a mage, right? You walk around in, in Orgrimmar or in Ironforge, if you're a lion's or uh, Stormwind, and you look up to the mages that have Netherwind shoulders and Netherwind robes. <laughs> I never got them. That pissed nope. me off. <laughs> I had, I had Netherwind bracers, boots, uh, gloves, legs and stuff, and then I got the AQ robe and the AQ shoulders, the ugly ass grey robe and the ugly ass grey shoulders. They were slightly better items, and they were kind of the same tier, but <laughs> that, that, yeah, that two point five. That's, that's did they call that? Story. I think AQ yeah, two point five. Two point five. It. Mo it yeah. I mean, it's very likely. I think for two reasons, you may have not had it as bad as I had it. 
One is the guild hadn't had the exodus, because you were probably part of that. So they were still going forward. Like you said, you joined when they just killed Nefarian and you were working through Iron Courage. So the, the guild was mm -hmm. still going forward, right? Problems tend not to occur if the guild is going forward. They do happen when it goes backwards. Uh, two, I happen to think the mage team was pretty good. And you might have got lucky there. I'm trying to think of some names. There was a guy called Jero. Uh, Suspense. I think was another one. I was looking through some screenshots the other day. And uh, both of those I think dudes Bang, were really Bang cool. was there for a second. Uh, he left like a month or two in when I was there for Harlequins. And I later met him again in Harlequins. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's the kind of the caliber of player that was probably in the mage team at that point. Which mm -hmm. might have been completely different from a priest team. I, my priest team, I, I mean, to be fair, I can't tell you anybody else who's in the priest team. They were all pretty bad, um, for what I can remember. I remember these, the two, Sabu Maru, because he was... And such a strange guy as well, because to talk to... I, I think if he didn't know who you were, he was really nice to you. It was so bizarre. Like, we would chit-chat waiting for ZG on comms. It'd be really, really nice. And then he would go and pull some shit like the Molten Core, Core Hound 2 thing. And you'd be like, you motherfucker. Like, it just completely twisted up. Um, Nargrim was a fantastic healer and great in whispers. That's how I got to know him. But I couldn't tell you the names of the other members of the priest team at all. I remember a lot of characters from that guild, but who the others were. And I think that maybe that was part of the problem that I ran into, is they recruited a lot of priests, and they were probably cycling through a lot. Because a lot of people rolled priests in, at least in vanilla, to guarantee raid spots, and we still see that today, right? You've, you kind of look where people are needed, and then you go, right, I'll make that, and I'll get a raid spot. But they don't learn how to play, they just end up being in this sort of dishwasher cycle of going through guilds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for what I could tell, though, the mage team was pretty well put together. Um, at least when I got there. Like, you weren't there. Bang had gone. But the other guys who were there, they seemed nice. And Suspense actually joined, joined Dark Light. Uh, we actually took... <laughs> I did take some of their, their good players uh, for my own guild. But they wanted out as well. To be fair, those dudes wanted out. Um, they weren't happy I mean, with what was going it on. It was... It was kind of the same for me, right? Because I moved on from that guild, I went to Harlequins, and I never really found my place there either. I was kind of like the low rank mage that was... I, fe I felt like I was recruited to be a Scorch bot for lower deb. <laughs> to pad the ignite, you know? Like, if yep. uh, for, for, for the people that don't know Mechanic, uh, back in Nexramas, uh, original Nexramas, the first mage that created the ignite dot, got that on the, on the damage meter and every single mage that added on to that ignite basically added on to the original mm -hmm. ignite which was credited to the mage that put on put out the first fireball i, fe I felt like i was basically just recruited to be a, like a lower depth scorch but to boost that ignite and i really found my place there and when you approached me to join dark light which was I, I joined immediately i think I, I left immediately uh to be with you again because i knew that at that point, progress wasn't the be and end all. It was having fun with players, which didn't happen again after I left Berserkers. I joined Confused. It was a horrible guild to be in, player wise, pleasure wise, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Then in Harlequins, people, people were so established that it was really hard to get into. It probably needed more time, and then I would have probably felt more at place there, but it just didn't happen in the space of Nakramas. Um, well, well, they went on to do super well. Um, and I get that feeling after talking to because I got friendly with a few of the members of... Not when they were Harlequins, but what they did, and I don't know if you know, is they made a secret guild. So I wonder, I kind of would, would like to get an interview with them, actually. And in fact, I know one of the members who could probably explain this to me, because I, I suspect it was actually really devilish what they did, is... While Nax Ramus was still going on, they I think the TBC announcement and the 25-man raiding had been revealed, like they knew that was coming. They made a secret guild that was going to be on a different realm, I think. It might not have been a different realm, they might have been on the same one. But it had a website and everything, and only certain members of Harlequins were invited to that website. <laughs> like, they 100% knew who was getting ditched a long time before Vanilla finished. Um... And that guild That's became, new to me. Yeah, they became the guild known as Celebrity, um, which was made up of all those guys and brought over some others. They went on to, like, World 7th, I think, or World 13th. They were very, very good. Um, but that's what happened there, is I because I got linked to it by accident. Like, someone was telling me, like, oh, well, have you, have, have you been invited to Celebrity? Because they were picking people. Uh, and I was like, no, what is Celebrity? 
and it went there but you could the, the stupid thing was mike like you could see who had registered on the forum recently right on that website at the bottom you know the old websites where it show you recently yeah. registered people yeah they were all the harlequins PHP members. PBB. <laughs> yeah they were all harlequins members and i was like motherfuckers <laughs> like i know who these players were and i'm looking at it i'm going you scamming bastards you've already made a new guild and you know half of the original roster of harlequins is not coming over here uh, and they are going to ditch you the moment you get chance like, i think you'd gone by them but i got linked to this website and at the bottom i could recognize the names they also showed you who was currently logged in you still have the list of who's online right now and i'd recognized all the names they were like the harlequins officers and some select fews from there and it was a i'm glad we weren't a part of that you know because we just broke away and made our own thing quite publicly actually. yeah yeah it wasn't I think, secret I, I think i i mean I, I, w I would not have made that cut i was not among the upper ranks of harlequins at all uh i, I left probably before any that happened or it was starting to happen and we quite publicly made our guild and it was it was quite a thing i think it was um we made some noise am i wrong in saying that no you're not it, it was we were certainly not server first i don't think I don't think we were. I'm, I'm, I'm more so saying in vanilla terms where we started poaching people and it was <laughs> noticeable that good players were starting to leave guilds in fairly high positions like Harlequins, Confused and stuff and joining a new guild. Yeah, I, I was looking at a screenshot actually. Um, I have it here and I can kind of sense you. I was looking at a screenshot of one of the first things we did together. Um... And you can see, this was just uh, a random thing as we were just getting started here. And I'll, I'll, put, I'll make sure it's on the screen for the guys. But you can see some of the names here. And there's a mix there of Harlequins people. There is Confused people in there. There's some definitely shitters in there. But the, the team is starting to come together um, mm -hmm. of who was going to be there. Cause, and other players we'd recruited. So you see Suspense is in there. Is confused from Confused. Gorez was from Confused. Uh, Slevin uh, was from Harlequins. Um, I think Tyranny was also from there. I'm not sure where Yomi came from or Ronko. Uh, but I, yeah, we were, I was openly poaching people. I'm not going to lie about that. Because I, honestly, I felt it's not as it was poaching when I was whispering these people to get in. I was whispering them saying, do you like it here? Like you're saying, it's like, do you like it? Do you like the way this is running? Because I was so pissed off and so angry and so bitter. Uh, I was like, do you like the guild? And these guys were like, no, I don't like this guild at all. Um, I can't stand the leadership. I can't stand X and Y. I was like, look, I'm going to make my own guild going into the Burning Crusade with a 25 man. I'm trying to get the best players I possibly can. You're not in this raid, by the way, you slacker. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where I am. <laughs> you, you probably weren't on online. I think we just heard Kazakh was up and we're like, we'll go smash it, like uh, 15 man or whatever it was. Um, I was like, well, look, I'm making my own thing and thankfully people liked me which was nice um i always got on well with the good players so that helped a lot but mm -hmm. since confused taught me one thing and that is like as soon as you see those red flags you've got to get out you've yeah. got to get out especially now you can cross realm it was like you said earlier it was much harder for us because we was kind of stuck there there wasn't anywhere else to go if you wanted to go further you couldn't just jump to the harlequins you were i was still mortal core geared maybe that was part of the plan is not giving me items is to uh so you couldn't move on <laughs> i'm really now thinking about it and i'm pretty sure i never got a piece of gear i got one piece of gear from blackwing lair despite all the content i did i think that was it from modern that could onwards. be the thing you know it could be just like hey that that guy's working for us he's doing the things we need him to do in his current gear why give him gear that could give him the step up <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't think they've ever made me a member. And I think that's how they kept catching people out like me and Tyrant and X-Men was the same. Is that they, uh, if you were, you always were lower priority than members, even on alts. So they would just cycle in more alts once their mains were gear capped. And so they would just bring alts to overstep you over and over again. And so I, I, I seem to remember, it's coming back to me in flashes, that there can't be more priest alts. There just can't be. <laughs> And then more would appear. Uh, somebody else wants to play their priest. Mort wants to play his priest, whatever. Um, and that was it. You're, you're getting nothing, man. You're getting absolutely nothing. What a horrible fucking guild. <laughs> absolutely the absolutely worst experience. Absolutely terrible. <clears throat> I would but put like this as my say, worst experience. People... Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, 
it's, it's hard to quantify for me because I, I I don't know the gritty details like like you do. But uh, it, it it wasn't a fun guild to be in, that's for sure. No. It was bitter. Uh, but unfortunately, back in those times, we had little choice. And as you said, um, relating to these times that we are now, you absolutely have a choice. Um, you don't yes. have to be in a guild like this if you are. I'm sure there are guilds out there right now and that there's people listening that are going through these things where these things are happening in terms of loot, in terms of leadership, in terms of officers taking things. You don't have to go through it. You no. can absolutely get enough gear to move to a guild that isn't like this and where there's good good human beings. Um, you don't have to suffer. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay, let's leave it there. That is the most corrupt guild we were both <laughs> ever in. I, there's, there's so many stories of that guild, of what they did. And I was only there a few months. <laughs> but God, I hated it so much. Oh, it, it almost <laughs> ruined raiding for me. If it wasn't a case of I, I thank God for the berserkers that show me it, it's not like this everywhere. If I hadn't known that, I think I would have been like, "Yep, yeah, this is how raiding is." Uh, it was it was such a good first guild for us. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it's a shame how it went, but it was. All right, Mike, I'm gonna call it there. Thank you everybody for listening, uh, and we'll see you again because I mean we should tell the story of Darklight because it's fucking all over the place that guild. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a lot to say about Darklight. So if, if people are interested, let us know. We'll tell the story of how we started TBC. Uh, and did, we did finish the... Mm, did not finish the Burning Crusade. No, my guild did not survive the Burning Crusade, unfortunately. No. Nope. Uh, but it had many journeys along the way. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.